What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, today, it's just Harry and I, kind of like the old school. Uh, yeah. Alex, Alex is uh, taking a little time off. So, yeah, man. So, I guess lately we've been talking a lot about like general the economy and like what how things have been working as far as the you know indexes and all the the major large caps and all that stuff. And you know, I feel like every week we're getting a lot more information. There's like news coming out every week that's kind of driving the yeah. latest stock market kind of move. And I feel like this last couple of weeks has started to really show like as a country and as probably a war as the world, we are probably headed into a recession. If not, whatever's worse would be a depression. Um, you know, so far everything data wise that we've been waiting for CPI and all that stuff has been higher than expected. Everything's coming out worse than they think. Yeah. You know, and I don't know about you, like Harry, but at least around here, I'm noticing I'm starting to notice more now mm. of a recession again. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's here. It's we talked about it in the past, but it's like there's just no one working. There's people kind of just struggling to kind of get by um, the markets down. And when the market's down, people spend less. Right. Like I live in a, yeah. a nice area and a lot of people as they make money in the market. They're taking that money out. They're buying the nice cars. They're buying, you know, the houses and the, they're doing their job renovations for their house and all that. And I'm noticing now it's kind of definitely slowing down, but I don't know what, what's everything going on in like Canada right now. Yeah. So like kind of where I live, there's like, and I was talking about this with my grandparents as well, because my grandparents like live in like a pretty like uh well-off kind of like decent area, like where I'm from. And kind of what they've noticed is that, and like I've noticed this too, is that during COVID I found the top one, not 1%, but let's say that, let's say like, if we just say uh, between like 50%, like the bottom 50% didn't do the best, you know, the yeah. people on the bottom did not do well, right? Like if you were already struggling to get by before COVID, now you have to worry about getting groceries. Now you have to worry about everything being more expensive, right? So we have things that have inflated so much where it's like, if you own any of those assets, like you did pretty well, and if you don't, and you're more of a consumer, and you don't really have the best job, and you weren't really in the, the best position, you know, you were, you are, if you were struggling before, you're really struggling to afford things now, right? And so I noticed that there are a lot more people on the streets where I'm from. Um, there are a lot more people like, like Walmart is packed every single fucking day. Walmart is packed there's a lot less people using where where i'm from we have kind of like two main grocery stores we have superstore and we have sobeys there's a lot less people shopping there there's a lot more people shopping at walmart the dollar store lines they had to implement self-checkouts because there's the lineup is at the back of the fucking store 24 7 seven days a week right and so that dollar store index is kind of what i use to see like you know, first of all, that stock's never going down. Like Dollarama, where I'm from, it's a Canadian stock. That stock is never going down. Even in COVID, didn't even didn't even go down in COVID. You know, like no one sold that shit off because it's the Dollarama. You know, that's where everyone is shopping, and it's crazy because like when when I notice stuff like that, that's when I'm like, okay, we're actually in a problem. You know, Walmart is packed to the end of the store. The lineup is packed. Like they they couldn't even like. You, you will go on a Sunday morning, you can go on a Friday night, a Monday night, wherever. The Dollarama and Walmart is packed. So for me, it's like, I know people are struggling when I see a lot of people there. And also I think, and we talked about this as well with Alex yesterday, is that uh, companies like FedEx, companies like Pure Later are closing down their offices right now due to the fact that uh, you know, they're just not seeing the shipping volume like yeah. they did before on COVID, right? During COVID, they had to expand, they had to open things up. They were like, our business is growing like crazy. And now we're in a situation where, you know, they're shutting down. They're like, the, the package volume is not what it used to be. So, I mean, that's where I've kind of seen, you know, yeah, that's where I've kind of seen a lot of kind of like where it is right now, you know, yeah. like before, I think before when you had me on the like, or not, you had me on the podcast, I guess it's like ours. But like, I think before, kind of in the summer, I was like, I don't really see it, you know, Yeah. but now I'm starting to see it a little bit more where it's like, you know, people are still going to concerts. 
it, but you definitely see that the restaurants aren't as full, yep. right? Like I used to have, I used to have to make reservations in advance. I used to have to worry about waiting an hour. Now it's like, I'll walk right in and get a table. You know, that was like unheard of where I'm from. Yep. So it's like, you are starting to see it now where it is getting worse. Things are getting a lot more expensive. I can't go to the grocery store without spending $30. For for one meal, yeah, I can't go meal. without, yeah. right? I can't, yeah. like, I mean, what was that like before, you know? It yeah. used to be like 10, 15 bucks, you know? If you wanted to go in and get, now if I want to go in and buy, like, let's say I want to buy a nice steak, right? Like, just for supper, I want to buy a nice steak. I want to buy some fries. And let's say, you know, if you add, you know, pop or you add, if you add beer, you know, you're spending 50 bucks. If you add pop, you're spending 30 Yep. So it's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. And I, I think right now, the biggest thing I'm noticing is just like lack of buying power. I think this is the first time in our, our lifetime, at least we're seeing inflation yeah. uh, be as high as it is. And I think I never understood the like, actual impact of inflation on just like the regular world, like everything going on. And I'm noticing it now. I'm noticing people more penny pinching because when you're spending that much more on food, on gas, on everything, you just have a lot less money to spend. And yeah. I, you know, I actually went to the mall the other day I had to grab some stuff. It was dead. And yeah. all during COVID, it was a zoo because people were getting stimulus checks. People were spending money. They were at Louis Vuitton, Gucci. It was just crazy. Whereas now it's like, it's kind of like what you said. I just notice people spending less and yeah. starting to be a little bit more tight, which is not good for the market because we need, especially in small, as small cap traders too, but we need people putting money into the market. And the reality is that most people nowadays probably don't make enough to not only pay their bills, you know, this even pre-inflation, but now not only to pay their bills, but they don't have more money to actually put into the market. So yeah. what really sucks is that we've, for the last hundred years, we've already grown the wealth gap so significantly bigger. And when stuff like this happens, like as bad as this is right now for the world, when we come out of it, because it will happen eventually, we're, we might go into a recession, depression, whatever. Yeah. The people that had the money, the people that were able to capitalize will just get richer. So it's just the wealthier, the wealthier top 10% of people will just get wealthier and the lower end people will get lower because then stocks will rebound. Then they really won't have any money to buy. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, it's right now too. It's tough. I know a lot of my friends are looking for houses and dude, when inflation is like this, your buying power is cut into a third, you know yeah. I mean? You know, for it's just it's very hard right now, and I think, I think the general world is starting to wake up and realize like, hey, something's wrong. Meaning like, it's not just America now, and I think America has always been the engine of of the world, uh, for at least the last you know hundred years or so. But now it's like the global recession is probably happening. Um, you know, we have foreign countries working together to on foreign policy. Um, possibly like depegging the dollar, or trying to go against the dollar, which would be terrible for us if we lost that that standard. Oh, um, that would be bad. It'd be terrible. It'd be terrible for the market and everything. And now we have people like Ray Dalio, who I think is probably one of the most intelligent people in the world, is saying that if, if uh, rates continue to increase even by a little bit more, he sees a 20% downside in stocks. That would crush the economy because there's a lot of over levered people yeah. Um, in the market still, and they're just praying for it to bounce because we've been saved every time. And you know, it was what 20, uh, 2008, well, you know, yeah, whatever. When Lehman crashed, you know, that was not that long ago, and it feels very similar to that, just as far as data goes and, and all of that. Yeah, and I also, I, th I think, like, and this is what I was thinking like, if you were in the bottom, let's say 10%, like, like, what do you do to uh, to try and get richer? Like, I'm not really sure at the moment, you know, no. like you try and save money here, but oh, you're, let's say, you know, oh, you have a rent increase, you know, you try and save money here. Oh, but this pops up. Oh, you try and save money here. Oh, but this pops up, right? Like you would have to literally just work and come home and, and save your money and hope that your car doesn't break down or hope yeah. that you don't get a flat tire, you know, but and that, that would be it. And then the only way you could really do it is putting that money into, into stocks. Like that would be the only way yeah. you could try and, uh, you know, get richer and like improve yourself. Other than that, I don't really know, you know? Yeah. So like 10 years ago when I was 18, we, when I was when we opened my first uh, business, 
And back then I could work over, like I could work as much as I wanted. So I'd work 80 hours, right? If I was working 40 and let's say I wanted more money, I would just work more hours. And then, you know, I was in a position back then where I could just stash the money away, which helped me long-term and got me into trading and all that stuff. But now it's like you said, I have friends that work 50 hours a week. It's a full-time job. And after that, they get, let's say $1,500 in their check after taxes, it's seven fifty, And then they pay their expenses. They're left with like 150 bucks over a week or something like that. And yeah. it sounds terrible and it sounds really like harsh, but you cannot grow wealth on $150 a week. At that point, you need to somehow work on moving up in your career, moving up to another job that's going to pay you more. Because <clears throat> I hate when people talk, <clears throat> excuse me, about like saving money by like not buying coffee. It's like, I get it, but that $2.50 a day, I'm sorry, it's not going to change your life ever. No. Right. And it's like, but, and that's the point is now there's so many people in that position of how do I save money? How do I get to the next level? How can I invest in stocks? But the reality is most people can't. Most people can't get into real estate. They don't have the cash. Right. And it's and I'm noticing that a few years ago it was only a few people I know that were like that. Now it's I would say 90% of the people I know are just in that pay their bills, go to work, pay their bills, go to work. And it's just a cycle of like never breaking it and never moving on. And now only people want to work from home. All people want to do, they want to work less. They'll make less, but at least their life is just a little bit easier because they don't have to actually commute anywhere. Yeah. And, you know, I, I just, I don't understand that whole concept anymore. It's like the whole concept <laughs> of like, and this is another thing that actually I have even a friend who's done this where they're working from home and they're working two jobs. Yeah. So he went from making 50K a year and he also signed a contract. Like he signed a contract, non-compete. He signed a contract that he would not have another job. And literally this dude is working from home. He's like one of my, one of my good buddies. And you know, he's making hundred K because he, he he has two jobs. Right. I respect it. I mean, that's a hustle, you know? I mean, it's like, no, it's not technically allowed, but I mean, dude, people got to get by. People have to make more money. Right. It's like, it's like the same thing. It's like, you know, I don't, you know, people, they do whatever they can to get by and make some extra cash. And it's, yeah, and he's like, like he's, he's working IT. He's like on yep. the phone all day, like different calls come in from yep. like different places. He's like selling shit, you know, he's got yep. like leads and prospects and he's doing it for both companies meetings. He's scheduled them like an hour apart. He was like, bro, I had meetings from nine to five today. I was like, why? Like, why'd you have so many meetings? He's like, bro, I got one company here. And then right away, I got another company here. But <laughs> it's like, what, what are you supposed to do? Yep. You know, at the, at, at this point, like, I think it should be allowed. Like, you know, if you're like those types of non-compete contracts shouldn't exist anymore because if you're not going to pay your employees like a good wage, yeah. like how are your employees supposed to live, you know? Yeah. And just wait and wait until there's an actual, like when it really hits the, the shit hits the fan that we're really in a recession. I mean, companies are going to start laying people off. They're going to start, yeah. you know, actually realizing like, wait a second, people need to come back to the office, yeah. you know? So at, while you can, you got to hustle as much as, as possible. But I think as like traders, we come become kind of numb to the money and like, you know, the reality is to get involved in the stock market, you, I mean, to trade, you need call it 30 grand, 25 K is PDT yeah. you trade unlimited over. You basically need 30 though, to even get your feet wet. And it's like, yeah. I think we become numb to that because, you know, when you're making a few thousand dollars a day, you just forget how much money that actually is. And it's like, dude, the average person, like they might not even have 30 K to their name. You know, they're, they might not yeah. have, they don't even their anything they have may not even be worth that. And I understand that a lot of my friends want to trade and, and they want to learn, but it's like, dude, you, it, it sucks, but you need money to make money. And yeah. it's, it's tough. And I just, I think we're entering this phase of like, you know, it's going to be slow for a while. I think small caps are very um, interesting right now. I'm like noticing like there's, there's these moves and you're like, you've been taking really good advantage on the long side, but like they're it's nothing's powerful. Like nothing's like, yeah, nothing's like too crazy. Um, no. For me, how I kind of see it right now is that like, if we break over high day, it's going to be like 20, 30, 40 cents, yeah. you know, and if it's a lower price stock, it's probably going to be like 20 cents, you know, that's probably all you're going to get, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I mean, for me, I'm just trying to take like what I'm offered and what I'm given. And I'm just trying to keep it simple every single day. You know, I had a nice trade on beat. The day before that, I had a nice trade on whatever that stock was. I forget. 
and you know, just a couple nice trades patting the wallet throughout the week. Like I, I, I liked it. Um, you know, so I'm just trying yeah. to keep it super simple. Um, just stick to what I know, you know, buy support, sell resistance. <laughs> and I also think that, you know, there are a lot of people in this market trying to go for home runs. There are a lot of people in this market who are, uh, it's more of like a chasey kind of market. I find where like, yeah. there's a lot of shorts who are slamming the lows and there's a lot of longs who are buying the highs. And I mean, that's just the market in general, but I mean, now I think a lot of people, the thing is, is that we get these types of markets when people really need money. Right. Yep. So, uh, those stuff moves at the highs are more prevalent because we have, you know, you know, thir- we have a bunch of, you know, we've got like a million volume, like over the high a day who are fucking chasing it, just praying for that one breakout, praying for that one breakout. And when it stops, you know, they're all trapped. They're all stuck. That's the end of the move. Right. Yeah. And so every single person, you know, I, I'd say the majority of small cap traders, you know, they're people who need money. Right. You know, they they're looking for that big move. Yeah. Like, they're looking for that hundred percent move to grow their account a hundred, 200 percent. And we're just we're not going to get that, you know, not in this market anyway. Yep. You know, how long were we saying, oh, we need a runner. We need a runner. We need a runner to light this up. And now no one's even saying that because we just know it's not this, coming. This, this is where it is. Right. <laughs> when's the last time you saw a stock go three to six at the open or when's the last time oh, that you man. saw a stock open up and just keep going higher for the entire fucking day? Dude, I don't even remember. A t- I don't remember a stock that like really spiked at the open. Like lately, yeah. they kind of like dropped down a little bit and they might pop. But like we don't get that push over high day much. And it, like you said, if it does, it's like 20 cents, 30 cents. And then it just tends to like channel. Like I feel like yeah. we're in this like I'm not a big person to be like, oh, there's algos, there's algos. But I really feel like right now it's a lot driven by algorithmic trading because it's like you look at beat yesterday. It's just up. They sell down boom up they sell and it was like clockwork right it was right at the end of the day boom shots over high a day by like 20 or 30 cents right yeah that like, was great you know it's like this, it's just that kind of trading right now which is a, a market where like bow like really does well because it's very much the line to line market yeah uh, there you know there is nothing i had to ch- i changed my mentality a little bit and i was talking with bear about it just now it's my mentality is this before it was about account growth and just like keep growing your account as big as possible to increase your risk but in this market, it's more of, you know, grow your account, make money, but pay yourself. It's yeah, just like, exactly. you get in, you make your money, you take it out. You get in, you make money, take it out. Because there's just not, there's not going to be the opportunities anyways to really size up right now. It's just not yeah. there. You know, you think it's, we take the layups that come, you stick to your risk. Like we said, risk manager was important. You were talking about it yesterday. You take one cut for 10 cents or whatever, but then you nail a 50 cent move. Yeah. Like, my two cuts yesterday were like break even, you know? Yeah. That's it. They, and you and Tom were good at that. Oh, sorry. They were both around the uh uh kind of like the whole number. Yep. And I was like, you know what? If this kind of consolidates or sits here for too long, I'll just wait. And so it was kind of consolidating, 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 like kind of like chilling there for too long. So I just sold it. And then when it dumped lower, I bought back. And I ended up getting that nice move from like 195 into, I think it was like 243. Yeah, so. I feel like I feel like as a long right now too, you have to be like extra careful because I feel like you could so easily like if you ignore your risk like level, like the stock oh. really not come back. And like you know, yeah. we know people who've done it right. They buy 10 cents lower, 10 cents lower, 10 cents lower, just keep yeah. going. And you can get one of those days where it just doesn't bounce. So I. I think it's good that how tight you keep your risk and you've always kind of been like that, but how tight you keep it is very, impo- is very good. And it's yeah. impressive, you know, and Tom's the same way in the short side. Tom's very good at, you know, he almost basically cuts yeah, he is. even. Yeah. He, you guys are very similar that way. It's just line to line. Um, I mean, you're way better than Tom because he's trash, but, <laughs> but no, I mean, the market's going to be tough for a while. I think this is what a bear market feels like. And I just think at this stage of the game, it's, you take your money and you run yeah. and that's it. You stay around all day. It's really not much going on. It's slow. I check in in main chat and it's like not much going on. So, you know, that's where we're at, but. Yeah. And I might, you know, I might start coming back for the afternoons because the afternoons have been like kind of a little bit squeezers. better, like yeah. little squeezers, like into the close, like that's nice. But again, like to me, I'm not, I'm not pushing too hard right now. I'm just trying to, you know, take it, take it, 
day by day as it fucking comes, you know, and that's really all that someone like me can do. You know, like yeah. you wake up, like even yesterday, like a couple things ran, but like in the open, I wasn't really a fan of them. Like we had, uh, I think it was like ADXG or something like yeah. that. The sympathy to, sympathy to uh, HKD. And it's like, you know, I've never been good at sympathy stocks. Like, for example, uh, oil, when oil was kind of going crazy yeah. and we had all the oil stocks, you know, we got to move from like two to four, but I've never been really good at, at catching them. Like I'm just, you really, if you want to trade sympathies, like as a long, you have to be watching the other stock yeah. and then you have to have an idea on the other stock that also could line up on another stock, you know? So you're like, Oh, I want to buy this one at support, but I'm not going to buy it because that's the head of the snake. Oh, but this one is getting closer to support and you have to like correctly get, get into that timing and get involved. So for yeah. me, it's just too hard, you know? Yeah, I feel like as a short, uh, sympathies are a lot easier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%, because you see the main one crack. Yeah. Everyone's like, it's done, it's done, it's done. You scale in on all four, and they all fucking get smoked. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, I mean, I think you have such a good approach to a slow market. And I think a lot, I think by the time we come out of the bear market, whether it's a year, two years, six months, whatever, I think there's going to be a lot less traders out there. And I think there's going to be a lot less people on Twitter talking about how much money they make because- yeah. Is, this is a hard market. It's been a hard market for a year, which kind of leads into like the questions. Like we got two questions from members that we wanted to answer. Um, a big they, two questions. Yeah, big two. And, and they, but they were good. And, you know, so the first one was, um, how are you adapt? How did you adapt your trading over time? And how did you adjust your trading over time? Um, and I guess we can both answer if you want to go first, Harry. Well, for me, I think when I first started, it was really important, like building my account. So my main structure was first bounce. That's kind of, everyone knows that's how I kind of like built an account where I'd wait for stocks to kind of go up. I'd take that small 10, 20, 30 cent move. And then I'd go, you know, the stock would go lower and that would be it, right? It would kind of go up, get that bounce, sell lower, right? That's how I kind of grew my account. Now I'm a lot more fucking greedy, you know? I have gotten to a stage where it's like, you know, as bad as this sounds, I don't want to be scalping for 10 to 20, 30 cents. You know, I want to be getting a dollar a share move. And I think that just comes over time with experience, right? Being able to recognize that opportunity. So when I was first growing my account, my mindset was line to line, 10, 20, 30 cents. Uh, I'm not greedy. I'm very, very, very disciplined. I'm you know, you're, you are strictly growing in account. You're strictly looking at one setup. Um, you are, you're not going for a big move. You're not going to be greedy. Your main focus is growing that account. So for me, I was like, I'm sticking to this one setup. I know my entry. I know my exit. I know my this, I know my that, and that's it. Now I'm a bit more of a different type of, uh, creature you could say where it's like you know i'm walking in every morning and number one it's uh what what stock can make me the most money and uh what do i need this stock to do and how do i need this stock to behave in order for me to be able to get like you know a dollar a share move right and what type of price action am i looking for for that and that comes with experience you know i could name all five trades this week all five of them were, yes, similar in some way, but very, very different in other ways, right? So for me, you know, I'm not, uh, I, I'm just, you know, doing what I can in order to get the biggest moves each day and just kind of coming in and, and, and saying, you know, like what can give me the biggest, the yeah. biggest moves, you know? Yeah. That's about it. Yeah, I guess for me, it was like kind of the same thing. For the longest time, it was just about account growth, uh, like growing my account like over PDT and then like growing my account uh, as I got over PDT. And it was much more of a like take the money and like bail kind of mindset of like yeah. take that 10, 20 cents, leave, you know, and if I make $200 that day, great. If I make $500, great or whatever. Whereas, you know, now and back then, I also was more timid of taking the bigger moves because I think I was more afraid of giving back gains, mm. um, which is like, I think, very normal. I think it's hard to adjust your brain to thinking like, all right, I'm looking for a bigger move. 
Um, and I'm kind of the same way, just on the opposite side now. Like, I don't want to get involved unless I can take a large portion of the move. So yeah. That's why, like, I don't even really short stocks that are like under 30% that much anymore because there's just no range. And that's exactly. kind of like my biggest thing I've talked about recently is like, you just need range. If the stock's up 50, 60, 70%, and I know I can catch a 30% move, like, that's what I like to see. And that's going to give me uh, kind of like the what's worth risk. And I think before I was way less focused, which sounds terrible, but when I was newer, I was way less focused on risk. I was more focused on what I could make. And now I'm very much more focused on risk and that's it. Like no matter how big my risk gets, it's in check. It's very much like my risk size uh, will tell me my share size. And those are the kind of moves I'm looking for just bigger and, and much easier. So, yeah, I don't know. I think everyone, you adjust over time and you learn. And if you don't, I mean, you really won't make it as a trader anyways. So um, yeah, it's, it's actually surprising, like listening to you talk because like not surprising, but like, because I it kind of brought me back to remembering, you know, when we both first started and you were more of a, a scalper, you know, yep. you were more of take that 20, 30 cent move yep. and that's going to be it for me. And me, I was more of a scalper as well, where I'm like, yep. oh, first bounce, you know, like if you went in the chat and this was like three years ago in MIC or even four years ago, mm-hmm. you'd see me doing first bounce and James <laughs> doing scalping, right? And the thing is, I think now a lot of people now don't have that mindset, you know? Yeah. Like when we were first growing an account, that was our mindset. We were not greedy. We were taking the moves that we could. But I feel like now with all these like Twitter people and, uh, you know, this is the Holy Grail system and this (laughs) is the, the clear out and this is the this and this is the that. We have so many more you know people saying stuff and doing this that people really kind of stray away from building an account and they start doing other things right yeah today i have the idea because this twitter dude said this today i have the idea because this twitter dude said that right and people get away you know like like and and there's this whole thing like do you want to make money or you do you want to follow these like kind of like guru the and guru chart or whatever systems right and so it's like it's okay if you have built an account and you're saying okay i'm going to maybe try and work on you know a new setup or a new strategy but i can still you know get income in my trading from the other things that i've been doing right yeah. and i think really if you want to grow an account scalping is the way to get started because you get to learn and you get to understand how things move and you get to make money yeah. and we've seen a lot of people like if you can't fucking scalp i'm sorry but you're not going to be able to do uh your all day fader system yeah. i'm sorry so if you can do entries yeah I, if you can't yeah. consistently fucking scalp and sit at that chart and get every bottom tick and every fucking top tick all the way fucking up or all the way down like you're you're you like you're you're not going to be able to follow your fader system or your your whatever system or this or that or the clear out or the this because you don't understand how stocks move yeah so it's like if you don't understand how stocks move and you're not at that skill level, that's fine. But, you know, to me, it's just, you know, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna have a lot of trouble. Yeah. No matter if you have this Holy grail system or that Holy grail system, you know, if you don't, if you don't understand it and you can't scalp and you can't grow an account that way, then you really don't have a hope trying to go for these, 20% 20% moves because you're going to be so flustered on your entries all the way up and not really understand the market dynamics that by the time you're right, you're going to have so many paper cuts that it's not even worth it anymore. Right. Yeah. I think, I think the reality is like you need all these people think like, Oh, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I'm going to start a PDT. <clears throat> I'm going to follow this system. I'm going to be rich. The reality is you need a big account to follow these like kind of like <clears throat> system things because you need to be able to withstand like, cut after cut after cut after cut whereas most people don't realize that that's part of it and it's really hard so i think like both of us for example like we were able to scalp our way to an account where it made sense now we can be more picky but like there are steps to this you can't skip step one two and three to get step five so i think that's a really big thing and you know i think that's why we're still here is because we started slow made our consistent gains and then allowed us later to 
take these kind of opportunities that come now. So, yeah, you know, and that, I guess the, we can go into the last question here, which is um, how close have you ever been to quitting trading? Um, and if so, you know, kind of, what did you do about it? Or if not, you know, kind of talk about that. Um, yeah, I think for me, uh, there was never a point where I was like, Oh, I want to quit. There have just been bad days and you have that with everything. Right. You know? So for me, it's just like, if I have a bad day, you know, I'm just going to probably drink about it, yeah. <laughs> you know, have a drink. like I'll just chill, have a drink, and then I'll come back stronger the next day. And that's just kind of what you've got to do. You know, it's like, we are going to war every single fucking day. And there's going to be days where you're fucking shot at. There's going to be days where you get fucking wounded, but you got to go back. You got to stitch yourself the fuck up and go the fuck back out there. And that's it. You know, if, if, if you are like, like to me, it's just quitting wasn't an option. So it's like, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't really have that luxury of me saying, Oh, well, I'm going to go back to another job here. Like, you know, I, I, there's no way like if there, it's just not an option for me, but if it is, the thing is, is that there's probably a bunch of guys, they all have degrees. They all have a bunch of fucking work experience, you know, if trading doesn't work out, they can always go back to their old job. It's fine. No harm, no foul. For someone like me, it's like, I'm so young where trading has been my entire life. Trading has like, a trading was there, you know, when I was in fucking high school for me. So for someone like me, it's like, I'm, I, I don't have that. Oh, I'm going back to my regular job. Like for the most part, this has been the only adult job that I've ever fucking had. You know, like, that's just it. Like, I'm so like, I'm fucking 23. I started this shit when I was like, what, 17. And so this has really been the only adult job that I've had making real fucking money. So it's like, I would never do anything else, you know? Yeah, no, I, I think that makes sense. And like, I guess I was like, for me, it was like, I've just always known this is what I want to do, even since I was kind of younger. And, you know, for me, the reality was it just, I've never once woken up and been like, I don't want to do this. I don't. Want this. I remember after when I was first growing my account, I like scalped my way. I grew my account over PDT and yeah, you know, I, I was doing really well. And I remember I, I, the biggest loss I took was really early on. It was when I took, I took like a $4,000 loss. Right. And it was like, yeah. just when I was like hitting this big stride and it, the feeling in my stomach was awful. Like everything was terrible. I went to bed. I woke up, I got right to the computer. And it was like, I didn't think once, like I need to quit. I can't do this. Yeah. And I think, I think if you have that mentality, then trading might not be for you because you're going to have those moments where like, you're going to take a hit, you're going to take a big hit and you're going to sit there and like have to reason with yourself. And the reality is anyone who makes it in trading are, I, in my opinion, they're hustlers and then they're very, very driven. Um, and those people, you know, you just kind of, you got to fight through that feeling because it's not going to go away really like that, that maybe that self doubt or that like, that stress if you're one of those people um and you're gonna have to find ways to cope with it you know and just either you're you have that feeling or not and like i just harry and i are similar we just don't so yeah yeah i think that's pretty good but yeah i think that's pretty much it yeah that's it i mean guys reality is you know trading is what you make of it the harder the harder you work the more you put into it the more confident you are in yourself and the better you do it's going to show in your results um you take it slow it's one step at a time and you'll kind of end up kind of finding your own path so you know, I hope you guys enjoy these podcasts. You know, honestly, every week we're looking for new, anything you want to hear, like, please do let us know. Yeah, Uh, We'll have Alex back on too. We talk more macro stuff, but we love talking about small caps. So just let us know if there's anything you're interested in. Uh, You can DM me, you can DM Harry uh, and yeah, and we'll try to incorporate it. So perfect. Yeah. Thanks everyone.